In our last video, we talked about solar and how it all works at a fifth grade, ninth grade, and twelfth grade level. Now you've graduated solar school and you're ready to go to solar college. Today we're going to talk about RV electrical systems in a little bit more depth than last time. We're going to focus on how your RV is using electricity in a variety of situations. So here's your typical RV park. This is how most RVs are meant to be used and this is how most people use them. So you've got your RV here. You don't even have a solar system, you just got your stock RV from the factory and it's got a battery and it's got a little plug on it. When you pull up to your spot, you got the pedestal, and you plug in and you get power. And your RV is magic, and I'm just gonna keep it at that, and it sends some of the power to charge your batteries, and it sends some of the power for your AC circuits. Uh-oh, starting to get complicated here. So we have 12 volt DC and 110 volt AC, sometimes called 120 volt. Now let's think about a car for a minute. All cars are 12 volt. That's the only power you have in a car. So when you put your key in on the car, what can you do? You can listen to the radio. You can turn on your lights. You can honk your horn. So those are all things that can be done with 12 volt. When you're in your house and you plug into the wall, what can you do? You can run a hair dryer. You can do a toaster, you can charge a laptop. Anything that goes in a plug, you can do off 110 AC. And it's a different type of power. This runs off a car battery. This runs off the little slots you see like this. We've all seen those. That's 110 AC, different type of power than 12 volt DC. So in your RV, let's say you unplugged it. So what can you do if you're not plugged in with an RV? You can run your radio, you can run the lights, you can run the horn, you can run your water pump. You can do simple things. You can run your fantastic fan, but you can't run the outlets in the wall, even though you have these outlets here. They don't work when you're unplugged. So you can't do AC, you can't run your hairdryer, you can't run your toaster, you can't charge your laptop when you're unplugged. Let's say you're boondocking now. And that's what I call fruit, like just camping on a dirt road where you're not plugged into anything. You got your RV, which has a 12 volt battery. So you get there, and all you can do is radio, lights, water pump, flush the toilet, run your fantastic fan, basic 12 volt systems. You're not gonna be able to charge your phone on the wall. You're not gonna be able to run a toaster. You're not gonna be able to run your hair dryer. Can't do any of that. But let's say you pop out your generator. Now your generator runs on gasoline. It's like a lawnmower, you start it up, it starts going. Now what you can do a generator generates power. You can connect your cord, and now you can start running 110 stuff now that you have a generator. Now, depending on the size of your generator will depend on how much energy it can produce. Most little suitcase size generators can't do enough for a hair dryer, but they could do enough to charge your laptop or charge your phone. Now, a lot of like class A's come with giant generators that can pretty much run the whole RV, which is pretty cool. So that is your option if you want 110 when boondocking. There's one other option, however, but that is if you have an inverter. An inverter is a magic box that converts 12 volt DC power from your battery into 110 volt AC. With an inverter, you can run these 110 volt accessories. Now, just like your generator, it depends on the rating and the size of your inverter. If you have a 500 watt inverter, you can only do these 
things that take less than 500 watts. So you're only going to be able to charge your laptop, charge your phone, stuff like that. If you have a giant 3000 watt inverter like we do, you'll be able to do all this stuff. You can even run your air conditioning off of it. So the size of your inverter will determine the size of the load you can draw out of your plugs. So here's one more way to think about this. Your battery is at the center of everything. Everything revolves around your battery. So the outputs of your battery is 12 volt out. So every RV has a battery, every trailer, every fifth wheel has a battery that can do all of these things, plugged in or not. If you want to do the 110 stuff, you either need to be plugged into 110 or you need an inverter. And the ways that we charge our battery, there are three. Solar, pedestal, at an RV park, or a generator. So your battery doesn't really care what it's getting power from. These are the three ways you charge a battery, and these are the two ways you drain a battery. The bigger your battery, the longer it takes to charge. But the bigger your battery, the more you can drain in between charges. So this little circuit really helped me. In here, we're going to have the charge controller, which is the brain that decides how much to charge it. But pretty much, you've got a battery. You can either charge off your generator, pedestal, or solar. And you either drain it off 12 volt, or you drain it with your inverter going to 110 systems like this. Your AC unit, charging laptops, huge fridges, that sort of thing. One more example. Now we're back to boondocking. We got our battery, we've got our inverter, and now we have solar. So we don't need a generator anymore because our solar is feeding our battery. Our inverter is taking the battery juice and turning it into 110 volt. So now, as long as we don't exhaust our battery and our inverter's big enough, we can use all these systems and all these systems and the solar will keep on charging that battery throughout the day. Now when it's nighttime, the solar's not doing anything but we still have a full battery. And as long as we don't drain that battery during the night, during our processes, we're gonna be okay and make it through the night and then tomorrow, solar will charge it back up. So that's how solar comes into play in all that. So in an RV park, solar does nothing for you. All solar does is let you not plug in so solar's not super helpful if you're always in the RV park because you're in the plugged into the pedestal. There are exceptions to this, but for the most part, you're plugged into the pedestal and the pedestal is charging your battery. So solar's not doing you much there. When you're driveway surfing, solar, I don't think it's doing a whole lot for you because you're still plugged in, but this is only a 15 amp. This is a 50 to 30 amp, depending. So solar here, maybe it'll help charge your batteries and help this out, but I don't think it's needed in that case. In boondocking, if you're wanting to run your generator, which by the way is the cheapest way to make power when you're boondocking, solar's expensive. Generator is way more cost efficient. But some solar solar panels are totally silent which is really nice they're working while you're driving um and some if you have enough solar it can generate more than your generator can this is where solar really comes into play and it's not needed for everyone if all you do is driveway surf and stay in an rv park most of the time you're not going to need solar in my opinion if you're boondocking a lot and you're sick of your generator Solar is an expensive but great way to charge your batteries while you're working. Now, there are masters and PhD courses on this that I don't know enough about to talk about, but that should give you a really solid foundation of how batteries work, how inverters work and what they do, and how a solar 
array will fit into your system and how to balance that.